Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Lo, the owner of a John Lo Cage Fighting Series. Number four is going down on May 28th at the heart of San Francisco, Keys Harbor Building. Right next to me, I have, he's definitely not an NBA player. He can't be, but uh, he's a six foot six, uh, Luke, how do you say your last name? Brewer. Brewer. And uh, he will be making his professional MMA debut in our upcoming event, May 28th at the heart of San Francisco, Keys Harbor Building. Now, Luke, let's introduce you. Uh, to all the MMA fight fans out there, who you are and where are you coming from, where are you born and raised? Hey guys, uh, Luke Brewer, 27 years old, fighting out of uh, Sacramento, California with Team Mouth Mouth, Uriah Faber. I uh, originate, I come from Angels Camp, California. Uh, you may know TJ Dillashaw, he comes from that area as well, so we have some talent out of there. And uh, yeah, basically just grew up a wrestler, wrestled my whole life, through high school, through college, had success. Worked a day job, did some construction, figured that shit wasn't for me, and uh, luckily got in contact with your eye favor. He told me come on down and uh, check out the gym. Went down, never really thought I was gonna do it in the mat, and then uh, went down to the gym, checked it out, fell in love with it. I'm sure because your height, your length, you probably fit into a lot of different sports as growing up, right? For sure, for sure. And the, yeah, what, football, what, football, yeah, football as well. What yeah. got you choosing into like a wrestling? Wrestling family. My uncle was a wrestler. My dad was a wrestler. Uh, I followed the footsteps. My little brother followed the footsteps as well. And uh, it's just a family thing, really. Now, typically, every wrestler that I meet, a lot of them, they kind of short and stop. Oh, yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah. How the, do you feel like a disadvantage or like advantage on well, the height you have? I went through my growth spurt pretty late, you know, so I was more built like a wrestler growing up, actually was. I wasn't like crazy, crazy tall. I hit my growth spurt about junior, senior year. Uh, freshman year I came in, I was wrestling 140 pounds. Oh, Believe yeah. it or not, yeah. yeah. Sophomore year, 171, and then uh, 182, and then 195, so I hit a spurt pretty quick. And nice. I went from being under six feet to all of a sudden I'm six foot six in high school. And I was a lot leaner at that point too, because yeah. I didn't have muscle mass, so. Oh, that's, that's great. Though, yeah, man. so I had to change my wrestling style a little bit as well. You know, I became more of like a leg rider and more sweep singles, more swifty. A little bit less like a less muscle, shot. Yeah. yeah, less shot, right? More clinch and yeah. more technique, clinch more technique yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Now, um, so when do you decide, like, when did you move to uh, uh, um, Sacramento? Sacramento. Uh, like I said, I was kind of doing the day job. I went to school to be a firefighter. Like I followed all that. I went to school to do, uh, like anyone. Not really to be a firefighter. I mean, I wanted to become a firefighter, but I went to school. I wanted to continue my wrestling career, really. You know, and uh, I should have been D one caliber wrestler. I had offers from many D one schools because that'd be great in high school. Mm -hmm. Scholarship uh, all the way. Yeah, but the issue was I messed it. Typical high school student. You know, I didn't take it serious till my junior senior year, and so I didn't take the proper classes to get those D one requirements. So, I had to go the uh, JC route basically, and so my heart, I still wanted to compete, so I fell into the, like JC wrestling, you know, and uh, did that at Modesto. Uh, first year, because it's two years, and I was only junior college, first year, I took second. I mean, uh, not second, I took third in state, and I got most pins, like, least amount of time, because I'm a finisher. Nice. And then uh, my second year, my final year, I lost in the state finals, but made the state finals again. And then again, even though taking second in the tournament, I had most pins least amount of time because I'm a finisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, wrestling was done and went to school for firefighting, but I knew I wanted to be a firefighter. I'm gonna jump back into that eventually too, honestly. Probably that's a good career to have on the side with fighting. It's very doable. Benefit. But uh, at the time, I didn't want to jump into it because part of me knew I still wanted to compete in something martial arts wise, you know? So I just started working a day job doing drywall for Big Bear Drywall, who actually sponsors me now. Wow. But uh, at the time I was doing drywall and yeah, you know, I told my uh, lady at the time that I was like, oh, I'm gonna do MMA, I'm sitting doing MMA. And she kind of actually said like, oh, you can't do that, you know? So uh, I contacted Uriah and myself and I was like, hey, I'm kind of interested in doing MMA. I told him a little bit of my background. He knew who I was too, because I was, you know, you could research me on wrestling, I'm on the internet. So he told me to come down, check it out. I went down, he kind of put me through like almost like a little test course, you know, because I never threw punches stuff. I was just like a wrestler, just did the grind my whole life, and he wanted to see like if I could potentially do jujitsu, strike, and all that, you know, put me through like kind of athleticism test, you know, and I rolled with the guys. I've never done jujitsu in my life, but I was doing great at jujitsu as a wrestler, you know, and he's kind of impressed, and he's like, man, like, you really like this? Like, and TJ's from my area as well, you know, so we got something in the water up there, and he's kind of like, would you want to like, 
make this full time? And I was like, of course. Like, that's that. I love to. And he's like, well, you gotta like, you gotta go all in. You know, you gotta move down here. Because <clears throat> I was competing, I was moving, I was, I was traveling like two and a half hours. You know, training. I was going, I was working my day job at that time, trying to up at my local gym, which didn't really have much of its system at all. You know, and uh, so I basically was just doing the grind, working drywall, grinding at night, lifting weights, doing jujitsu as local as I could. Traveling down to Team Alpha Mill every single like Friday and Saturday, and it was just a lot of gas, a lot of time. And Xavier was like, "You gotta commit, like if you want to do it." And I'm like, "You're right." So I went up. I uh, told my boss like literally just immediately when Xavier told me that I should like make it full time. I was like, "Shoot, they just so now, should do it." You have know? a do so, you have a full time job right now? No, nah, I hustle. Just, just so try. yeah, so I basically I, I quit my job at the time. I saved all the money at the time. I wasn't much. Was what it was, you know. I started GoFundMe because I'm from a small town, got a great following. Started GoFundMe. I'm kind of wrestling famous up there. Everybody wanted to see me follow the same path as TJ anyway, so I put the GoFundMe together. We got a couple thousand just to support me to get out there. Looked up a room on Facebook and uh, rented a room off a stranger, you know, and uh, just made it work. And my dad at the time was telling me like, "You're crazy, man. Like, you need to get a job. You can't just fight. No, and do that." But I told my dad, "I'm like, no, I want to be a full time fighter. I want to go to the UFC. And in order to do that, you have to train full time. You have to be a full time fighter." You know, and I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do because I was just a wrestler and I was like, no, I need to, I need to strike in there, I need to do Muay Thai, I need to do Jiu Jitsu, all of this full time. So, indulged in it and let's come for, a little closer right here. And for the first year and a half, I just didn't have a job, just trained five so days now, a week, only let, train. Let's talk a little bit about your upcoming opponent. So, your amateur record is four wins and one loss, right? Yes. And you have the one loss, one hiccup. Now, your upcoming event, uh, your upcoming fight is against Tony Charles from San Jose, aka. Um, What's your what's your thought on him? Uh, from what I've seen, you know, he's kind of he's well rounded, which he should be. You know, he's from AKA. Mm -hmm. AKA is a great gym. We're a great gym. We both should be well rounded, you know. And uh, modern MMA is a little different than it was a couple years ago. You know, you don't really just be a one dimensional fighter, and especially if you come from a top level gym, you're, you're pretty well rounded. So, from what I've seen, he's pretty well rounded. Now and, he, uh, I, when I was talking to him, yeah, I said at first because we we offered him this fight, trying to put this match up to get actually while back and mm -hmm. one of his coach doesn't want him to take it and end up he's like no you know i'm i'm tired of sitting on the show i want i want to stay busy i want to take the fight you sure. know so no, coming into this fight knowing he knows it's gonna be a tough fight and when i talk to him he's like well you know, it kind of boosts my confidence up to take this fight because he fought my teammate mm -hmm. and my teammate so slow i beat him before so i'm gonna copy and paste you know so because yeah. he trains with so slow yeah so what can you run us back to a little bit what's going down when you fight so slow so it's a long fight, that was a great, great fight, tough fight, uh, competitive fight, you know? And we knew that going into it, we knew he was well-rounded, and those are the kind of people we want, especially as an amateur, you know? Those are the kind of people we want, we want those kind of tests, but a uh, little background story, at the time, uh, my dad passed away, and oh, so, so that. yeah, so that that's no excuse to be excited, it's just, I jumped into that fight, you know, and I had an amazing camp, did everything, trained, fought my ass off, fought a great fight, but you know, first time he wasn't in my corner, and it was a weird vibe while I was uh, different, and yeah, I took a loss. But uh, took some time from that, because at the time, I didn't, I wasn't too, too well-rounded. I was more focused on my wrestling and grappling, and so well, was so more of a striker. Tall, you know? You're so tall and lanky, I'm assuming once you get a little yep. bit of hang of the striker. Well, that's, what, that's what I was going to say there, so yeah, I don't know, you know if you saw my next fight after so long, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we went wherever we went. Yeah. We were standing, you know? Uh, yeah. Basically, after so salon fight, that was a good reality check. I jumped in the game. I came in here. I took like three fights. I took three amateur fights, like back to back to back to back. So I pumped up, you know. And then uh, we pumped the brakes a little bit, and then we wanted to get a good competition fight because at the time, after after so salon, we were planning on winning that fight and going pro because mm -hmm. we wanted a good test. The breeze picked that fight. We knew it's a good fight. Great gym, well rounded. That's the type of fight we wanted. We took that, and then uh, I lost it. it. Didn't work out. Right. So. No need to rush my career, you know. You don't rush this shit. So right. we pumped the brakes, and I just went back to being a student, you know. Went back to being a student and training full time still, but got back in Muay Thai, got in boxing class, hooked up with the boxing coach, hooked up with the jiu jitsu coach. Stopped just being a one dimensional wrestler, you know. And then I did it for about a year. It was a pretty big layoff. It was like over a year. And everybody's like, "When you gotta fight? When you gotta fight? When you gotta fight? When you gotta fight? When it's ready." And then uh, I got Jose, uh, don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I fought him on the GKO card and it was a great fight. Very that was a, before the pandemic, right? Right before the pandemic, yes. Wow, so. And then that sidelined me, so I won that fight. 
you're gonna go pro and then sideline. You know? Right, right, right. And then that was the point where there was no shows for a minute. Yes. Now, how do you see this fight's gonna go down against Tony Shaw? I'll be honest, it's a fist fight. It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down, you know? <laughs> it's gonna go, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fight, you know? It's gonna I go think, down. We're two martial artists. We yeah. come from two great gyms. I, mean, I, I, I can wrestle. I expect he can wrestle. I can grapple. I expect he can grapple. I, I can strike. Gonna, I expect he can strike. You know, I don't think he's gonna try to take you down. I mean, from, from both you guys' background, I mm -hmm. think he's gonna try to strike. Yep. You know, so this is gonna be an entertaining fight. So every, everyone loves to, you know, Try to do what they're gonna try to do, but the fact of the matter is, what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen. So, you know. do you think the fight goes the distance? I'm a finisher. You're a finisher. That's pretty awesome. Now, if people want to get a hold of you, buy a ticket, come watching you fight, fight, support you. How can people contact you? <laughs> Biggest form uh, social media: Luke Brewer, Luke L U K E. Period, like just the dot Luke dot Brew B R E W Luke Brew on Instagram. That's like the biggest following. That's where I'll post. Stories, ticket information, all that kind of stuff. And uh, sponsorship wise, uh, actually, let's go gym first. I want to thank my gym. I want to thank your eye favor. I want to thank all my coaches, everyone at Team Alpha Metal for backing me, you know, getting me ready for war, always keeping me ready, really, and sharp. And uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors Tri County Pest Control, Fox Security, Low Fab, um, Eclipse Computer Sales and Calaveras County Construction Company and Marshall Rogan Inu. Martian, Marshall Inu, my bad, Marshall Inu, because we dropped the Rogan. They're cryptocurrency and they're fighting for fighters, so go check them out. Now, one other question. I know this upcoming fight's 185 pounds. What do you walk around with, Luke? Yeah, I'm a big boy, but uh, that's a good thing with the pandemic too. I used to walk around, 85 used to be a brutal cut, man. <laughs> brutal, that's another reason we fought OSE, because uh, GKO, Amateur, you know, we fight the same, we, we fight and weigh in and fight the same day. Right, right. I was fighting 205 and 95. Because the fact of the matter is I cannot fight 185 and fight the same, same day. day. I'm a big boy, yeah. you know. I need, I need that cut. I need that time to recover. So that was another reason we went back to the drawing board. The Breeze wanted to get me a fight where we could get me a cut the day before, see if I could really make 85 before I do a pro, you know, mm -hmm. test it before I test it pro. And cut was beautiful. Obviously, it's not great. No one loves cut weight. It sucks, you know. It sucks, you know, but uh, it was Great cut, great recovery. Probably time I was in the cage, I was like 210. So, oh, shoot. so <laughs> I, I walk, recover pretty fast. You walk around like 210. I like my carbs, yeah. Yeah, I walk around like 210 inch, 205. You have a thing about if I like, fatten up, I get like 215, you know. In the future, do you want to stay at the 185 or you ever think about fighting a 205? I believe uh, I'm going to keep my doors open, you know, 100%. But just to be clear, I think I'm here to go to the UFC. Yeah, period. I'm here to go to the UFC, the quickest route possible, wherever I gotta fight, whatever takes me to get there, I'm there to take the fights that get me to the UFC or get me a contender series shot. So, go back, what was that question we're talking about? The last uh, how, how's your weight and then the Okay, so yeah, so 205. Yeah. I think my entry point right now, I'm just focused on getting to the UFC. I think I think my door to get there is 185. I think, I'll, I think I'm, I'm very big for the weight. It, I'm hard to handle at that weight for anybody. You have a lot of I'm, I'm a show person. People are impressed I can even make it. They're like, how, six foot six, 185? How, how are you not heavy? Like, people are impressed by that. It yeah. sells tickets itself. I think that's my enter entry in there. And then once I'm in the UFC, we do, we might wind up being heavyweight. Yeah. You know? Now, let's, before we wrap this up, um, if your opponent watching this interview, what do you have to say to Tony Charles? Same thing he said to me fight to fight, train, run. Go to all your classes, you know. It's uh, have a good, healthy cut, and I'll see you at fight day. Here's what it is, you know. That was pretty awesome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, making sure you guys stay tuned. We are updating the website this upcoming uh, weekend. You're going to see a lot of layout, fight car layout is going to be on my website. So stay tuned. This event's live stream, pay per view nationwide. So you cannot make it to the event. Making sure you guys order your pay per view voucher from dragonhousemma.com and subscribe my YouTube channel. Help me to grow my YouTube channel. And follow me on Instagram, dragon underscore house underscore MMA. And we have Luke Burrow right here. Uh, any last one you want to say to anybody else? Buy those tickets, May 28th. Let's go. I'll be ready. It's going to be a good time. Sounds good. Good to have you on board, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir.